think about home and think about what that looks like. Do you see the tall trees extending into the sky, arched over the green grass, coupled with a clean sidewalk where you can take a long and calming stroll and breathe in the fresh air? No worries and no troubles, just a safe and beautiful home. What would you do if that home was ruined? If those trees weren't as tall, the grass wasn't so green, the streets were dirty, a stroll outside wasn't calming because the environment around you was dirty or polluted, and it's completely out of your control. Take a look outside. What do you see? I see a colorful neighborhood, clean streets, healthy air, a place where I can be happy. But to every rule comes an exception. And in this case, I'm the exception. This pattern is no coincidence. In fact, it's caused by environmental racism, a byproduct of systemic racism. The oppression of minorities, specifically the African American population, has been a prominent issue throughout American history. Decades of oppression, segregation, and mistreatment have trickled down from years past, leaving a mark on America's minority population. And though year by year we step closer to an equitable nation, one factor that remains stagnant is systemic racism, one of the biggest reasons why issues such as environmental racism have yet to be solved. There are numerous examples in the United States proving the existence of this sort of injustice. Take Cancer Alley, Louisiana, for example, an 85-mile stretch of land with a predominantly black community so polluted by its oil refineries that its residents are 50 times more likely to develop cancer. Or Pahokee, Florida, where black communities can't enjoy a snowy winter day due to black snow caused by sugar burning. Or Flint, Michigan, where the county failed to treat its municipal water system, leading to the mass lead poisoning of children and adults, the majority of which happened to be families of color. Or Uniontown, Alabama, Warren County, North Carolina, Houston, Texas, the Bronx in New York City, Los Angeles, California, Detroit, Michigan, Chira, North Carolina, or Kingston, Tennessee. And despite the countless statistical evidence proving the existence of environmental racism, many still choose not to believe that it's a persisting issue in our country. Living in a clean community should not be a privilege, nor should it be a topic of discussion. This isn't a matter of luck or chance, this is a matter of racial inequality, and we've had more than enough time to solve it. And if the United States is the great country it claims itself to be, then no American should have to fight for a clean community. We need to act now, because a home like mine should not be considered the exception. <laughs>